accessibility. So uh, those um, accessibility or universal design, those are principles that unite society. That is nice. That is nice, universal design. Um, uh, previously, we thought if you need, we will make it. If they need, then we'll make it. Now we are no longer uh, applying they and we. If they need, we will make it. So now we uh, make a design universal for everyone. How do you evaluate it? There are different ways how we can look at it, but uh, recently also young parents come to us and uh, we have worked uh, together with the organization uh, for babies uh, where both of us, we understood that we share the same goal. We want to access the buildings and they also don't want to stay at home. This ideology that uh, if you have a little baby, you stay at home. Um, this has changed and people are not uh, any more prepared to, prepared to remain at home, sit at home um, and, and, and live all the time at home and also uh, people when they have broken a leg, for example, they also want to remain active to be able to access work, to get onto the train and get to school. Uh, for example, I, I don't want to skip a half a semester because I have broken a leg, because there is no lift at school. So maybe I can get to school, but then afterwards uh, get problems. So the public is requesting this more and more. Okay. You are just um, we will be happy to listen to your analysis. So you will put on the presentation and you will also switch between slides, right? Um, Jurgis, what is your opinion about these things? So I wanted to say what uh, Ivars already mentioned that um, Latvia, in the view of Eastern Europe, Latvia is not lagging behind so much in uh, the Eastern European context. Latvia is even um, in front uh, better than uh, Estonia, Lithuania and also some uh, southern European countries in terms of accessibility. And this is thanks to some uh, active people in Liepāja and Rezek and also Valka towns and in other places in Latvia who for for several years have devoted their time to ensure and improve the environmental accessibility. And if we talk about universal design, what we lack and don't have in Latvia is to put all these details together. Because uh, often we talk uh, kind of uh, in a fragmented way we 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 create a build we build a building but this building is in the middle of the meadow or field and this is not um, accessible how to get to it so therefore i would like to go through this and give an insight for you to understand where is the problem of uh, mindset understanding for those who are designing, who are planning and uh, do, working with locations. And then we can look at the daily routine and the daily life uh, uh, for people with disabilities or people with some uh, reduced mobility. So let us start with a building where the person, the individual lives. So. Um, first of all, we talk about uh, the Soviet inheritance and if the municipality is adjusting something. So how this is maintained, how these adjustments are maintained? Because uh, in, in Riga and other municipalities, there are some kind of equipment for uh, people with wheelchairs to get somewhere. But then later there is nobody who takes care of the maintenance. and. Uh, and uh, th so this just stands there and nobody can use it because it's broken already. Uh, second, 
we kind of force uh, people to build the building uh, so that it's accessible. And this is interesting that because when uh, you are young, you, you don't think that one day you will be old and it's going to be di more difficult. And when we look at the uh, individual private houses, and how they are built, um, we can see that recently uh, they are becoming uh, more uh, comfortable and uh, one floor, but uh, now, nah. but before we had a lot of buildings, uh, two stories uh, with a lot of stairs, and when people get older, they cannot live there anymore. And the buildings were built. And this is hard and complicated to, to adjust something, and very often people don't have money for it. And then all this task is uh, a burden put on the shoulders of the municipalities, and then it's quite complex. So the next step, when we uh, get out of the building, uh, is there lighting? Uh, for example, a person, if a person is blind, uh, is it possible for them to move around? Are these uh, guidance uh, available for them? Very often I hear that people don't uh, go to places because there is only one pedestrian crossing and um, I cannot uh, cross it and I cannot get to the public transport. The rest is okay. But there is only one pedestrian uh, crossing, and I am unable to cross it. And, and unfortunately, this is a barrier for somebody. Because those who don't have this problem, they, of course, can cross anywhere. And for them, it's not a problem. But for those who move around in a wheelchair, for them, this is a barrier, and that's it. So. Um, we could, um, if, if you walk around, uh, you can imagine that uh, for people with wheelchair, all these pavements and how they are lifted up, it looks like uh, this is a big wall for them. Also, if there are people with vision uh, impairments, um, can they get onto the right bus on the public transport? Because this is a problem also for people with, with uh, not good sight. Because uh, if you live in a place where there is a public transport stop, where uh, there are 10 types of buses um, stopping, uh, then you need to go to uh, each uh, specific uh, driver and ask, so which number is it? Or you should ask uh, people who are also standing. And this is a daily life. Every day you go to work, and every day this is a struggle for you. This is a challenge for you to, to get there, to get to your workplace. Uh, this is like a quest for you, so how to get on the right public transport. And so people are creative. Uh, sometimes they get on anyone, any transport, uh, they get uh, to the next stop and they know that there will be only choice of three buses, for example, and then it's going to be easier. Or if I go two stops, maybe there is uh, another option. So people kind of uh, find some solutions, some complicated solutions. And when you have reached a certain destination uh, in, in large uh, the uh, territories, uh, how are you able to orient yourself? So um, are there signs? Um, are those uh, guiding lines there? Because uh, like we spoke before, if this is a historic building and the entrance is uh, somewhere from the yard for people with wheelchairs, uh, is it uh, clear for everyone what should be done? Are there clear signs uh, pointing you to the place where should you should go? Recently, Latvia has also adopted European regulations and they have uh, uh, transposed it also as a um, um, Latvian standard about um, accessibility. And it's interesting that one of the first points which has to be taken into account when, some, uh, when the building is built, it has to be adjusted for people with uh, wheelchairs. And there are the first um, uh, the first point actually in those regulations is not uh, the gradient or ramps or so on, but clear signs uh, 
and a simple route for people uh, how to get around. Um, somehow we are doing everything from the other end. We are creating uh, super lifts and uh, ramps and so on. And then we discovered that, for example, there are gates and gates are always closed. And the key for the gates uh, is uh, at the disposal of a person who gets goes to work only once a week. And so when you need, you cannot accept and in a very very special cases for example at the commissioning of the building of course everything is perfect and everything is as it should be but afterwards nothing is like that uh, universal design means that if a parent uh, with a child in a pram uh, goes to somewhere, they will take the simplest route. And if uh, with a baby pram, they need to wait for uh, some mystical door to be unlocked, and all this is uh, very, very long and complicated, most possibly this young parent will not uh, choose this solution. And so this solution uh, will be just for a one person with a wheelchair but this is a very very narrow application and uh, that means that uh, this uh, means and these possibilities are provided for only for one person and so the next step how is the person feeling in this building for example you get to the university but uh, you cannot not access bathrooms can you study if you, if you how long can you you cannot uh, spend uh, uh, all day without access to the bathrooms or uh, also if you are working for example the building is okay you can enter it uh, you can get uh, to your workplace but you cannot get uh, to the bathrooms they are not accessible so all this is a question how do we adjust uh, these regulations regulations say that there should be at least one bathroom which is adjusted for people with disabilities or people with uh, in wheelchairs. And then there are situations I face on a daily basis that there is a building, a nine, ten stories building, uh, office building, where there are 10 or 20,000 square meters. And then for in all this building, there is only one bathroom for people with disabilities on the first floor. And is it enough? Because regulation sets a minimum, but developers and designers have to um, just try to imagine the situation. Because very often people kind of not uh, to, to th don't think outside of this framework because uh, uh, the regulations determine you should do like this and that. But very often, uh, we, if we talk also about plugs, the regulation doesn't say where we should place them, but you, somehow we think logically and um, we don't put them uh, on the ceiling. So the same should uh, refer also to the all the rest of uh, things related to accessibility. Also, now, when the pandemic started, um, People started working from home, and so they get to work uh, only once a week, for example, and then there are universal working places. So it's not your table, There are. Um, this is a working place for four or five people. And so how would a person uh, with uh, very, very, who is, has uh, very, uh, who is narrow sighted, uh, how they can see? Because they have adjusted the computer, the letters are bigger and numbers are bigger and everything. Or for the person with a wheelchair, the chair is higher and, uh, and table, for example, is lower or something. So how uh, universal it is and how easily a person can adjust uh, this uh, workplace. Uh, so so this is a question, how people are feeling at home, at school, uh, if they are in a wheelchair, can they only sit in the first row or, or uh, for a back row? And uh, for a person with nearsightedness, can they see uh, what's written on, on the blackboard or whiteboard? Otherwise, you cannot participate in lessons. Otherwise, you lose quite a lot of information. Have they thought about it? So all these are the issues and questions. Uh, we cannot uh, take anything out. 
And we cannot uh, just uh, erase uh, this uh, street or pedestrian crossing or circumstances at home or also guidelines on the street or, or ability to enter the public transport. And returning back um, to the first idea, uh, the state and uh, munis municipal institutions, very often they are also um, locating the Groot uh, uh, apartments, which are very popular within the deinstitutionalization. So, for for European funding's money or, or municipality money, these group apartments are built uh, for people with uh, some disabilities, uh, so that they can live it independently there. But then we check where those. Uh, apartments are located somewhere in the rural territory where there is no shop, no public transport, no working places, nothing. We just place them in the middle of nowhere. There is no, not even a pavement. So we place them in a building and they cannot get out. So this is a very, very complex issue. And like it was said before, You don't um, somehow need uh, just to get a person inside the building. The person has to be able to get there independently. And so that anyone who needs this solution so that they can use it. And a bad example we, we can see in many places, uh, also at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There are a lot of uh, possibilities how to solve this and ask accessibility issue. If you just uh, think a little bit deeper, think about uh, the modern solutions, maybe planning a little bit. We can see that there is uh, just this diagonal uh, uh, lift and, and this is covered uh, with uh, some kind of fabric and locked. And what do you think? If there is a mother with a baby pram, um, can they, will she use it? How can she use it? How fast? So I, and I come here or I come with a wheelchair. So what do I need to do? Where is the key? Who will take uh, the, this uh, tarp off and uh, who will who will do everything? All this is so complicated and difficult and all these solutions kind of um, are not welcoming. Uh, so you can um, put uh, the vertical lift maybe which is not covered and uh, or, or build a ramp without ruining the facade. Then there are also um, solutions possible with uh, stairs and also uh, attachment, which uh, helps uh, uh, to lift. And this is uh, not uh, complicated um, uh, to get the building. Um, so. Um, it takes like half an hour, for example, in some buildings to get in. So when, uh, for example, you enter to the building, you, you go to the building and then you understand that you will need 20 minutes to access to get in the building. So you might start thinking that 20 minutes for one building, then you go to school another half an hour to be able to get in. And so this uh, makes uh, the daily life very, very complicated. And that's, that's the reason why people uh, finally decide uh, not uh, to go out. And this is a reason why we don't see so many uh, people with disabilities on the streets uh, in comparison with other countries. So you just, we are in a hurry in a little bit uh, because uh, the clock is my boss. Uh, so is there anything else um, uh, very, very crucial that uh, it is important to say? Yeah, I will finish very soon. 
So like Ivar said that uh, very often uh, the bathrooms for uh, the disabled people very often are turned into the storage place for cleaners. And we might say, OK, um, maybe cleaners didn't know that uh, this uh, bathroom is important. But uh, what about the example that vaccination point is actually placed on uh, the parking lots for dis disabled people? So what were they thinking about? Those are doctors who organize it. Uh, they kind of uh, should be treating people and should be thinking about people. And if we think about super, super accessible buildings with a new ramp, for example, Riga Technical University scientific uh, building, um, but uh, the, the new entrance actually is not used, and they are using the old entrance, so, which is not accessible. And uh, actually, this is um, uh, quite, quite uh, violating all the logical thinking and 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 if we think about handles and and things which don't uh, cost a lot and the last which um, also outlines the situation among the designers is uh, the measure parks open air stage where the public gathers together for the song and dance festival, young people and old people, professional singers and amateur singers. And it's, it's a pity that uh, this is not uh, accessible for people in wheelchair. If you are a soprano, you cannot uh, access and you cannot uh, sing among other people. You can go, you can listen to others singing, but you cannot sing, because we tend to forget about those people when we are designing. Probably we, will, we cannot speak about uh, complete universal design, we, but still we have to remember that we are different those people are our people. Um, this is not uh, some alien who wants to live here, but this is somebody from our next door, and we have to take care of them. Yes, Yurdis, um, we can um, vote for and agree with your last sentences, especially because you said it uh, after a couple of days after the 18th of November, and next year we will 